people come together under this one giant umbrella, which is endurance sports and running. And then there's all these interesting characters within it that I, I just feed off of and I love. This is Billy Yang, filmmaker, runner, and food critic. We discuss his filming of Des Linden's 50K world record. Yeah, just to be at the front of it, the front row seats to witness history go down, the first woman ever to run under three hours in a 50K was was pretty remarkable. His John Muir Trail 200 mile through hike. From a timing aspect of it, it was never a better time to embark on something like this or to tackle something like this. And so much more. This is Run With The Crew. Got my guy Billy Yang here, filmmaker, trail runner, food critic. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get into that <laughs> a little bit. Welcome to Long Beach, uh, first and foremost. I'm happy oh, to have you here. Thanks for having me, man. This, uh, this studio is nice. I like what you did here. Thank you. I appreciate it. So yeah. You just got back from Oregon. A big, a big situation. Yeah, You're out there with uh, Des Linden. Whew. Um, I don't know where to begin. Yeah, I got roped in. Uh, not roped in, but <laughs> you know, I, uh, I had a relationship with her agent, Josh Cox, who's also a 50K uh, American record holder. Um, he still might have it, actually. Okay. And he has uh, transitioned to becoming an agent and he reps Des Linden. They've been working together since 2011, so going on 10 years now. And with COVID and pandemic and the majors being either canceled or postponed, they needed a target, they needed a goal to aim for. And um, you know, something in, something about Des is just built for, I feel like the longer the distance gets, the, the steadier she becomes, because she's just like metronomic in her paces. Okay. And, um, and she can put in big, big mileage at really aggressive effort. And so they had this effort to go after the 50K world record held by Allison Dixon of Great Britain. And it was a time of 307 and change. And so they went after it. Um, she ended up, uh, there was some drama at the end because she had the world record in hand. Because okay. we saw her at the marathon mark. She, did, she turned around and went out for five more. Um, it wasn't entirely, I don't think anyone was entirely confident that she would come under three, which is, you know, it's just nice, right? To have a two yeah. <laughs> in front of your number instead of a three. So that was like, that was like the secondary goal that they had. Um, but it was, it was getting up against it. And um, yeah, sure enough, she came through, charged hard, hard at the end and came through in 259.54, which works out to about a 547 per mile pace. So yeah, a lot. Des, a lot. Des is a beast, man. <laughs> she is a beast. Um, she was a good hang too. Um, also a fellow bourbon fan. So uh, yeah, just to be at the at the front of it, the front row seats to witness history go down. The first woman ever to run under three hours in a 50k was was pretty remarkable. So I was yeah, I enjoyed that experience a lot. That sounds awesome, man. So being in a position that you're there, not only there as a as a fellow runner, but you're there to work. You're there as a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. So how do you like separate your emotions, either potential excitement or even maybe disappointment if she doesn't hit it, and still focus on capturing what you know will be important to the audience? Because we're not gonna be able to see it live. Yeah, yeah. I mean you it, that's a thing, right? You have to kind of be a fly on the wall and you have to be uh, just uh, invisible behind the scenes and and I'm probably you're probably the same way I'm in this and I'm documenting this because I'm a fan first and foremost and yeah. I'm a fan of Des Linden's from her amazing 2018 Boston Marathon win uh, 2011 Boston Marathon where she got out kicked at the end um, at the last final meters of the Boston Marathon back then so uh, yeah I'm a fan first and foremost but it is it's something where my instinct in this is always, you know, since I got into it, has always been, okay, as a fan, what would you want to see? What kind of content is out um, is not out there that you would want to see? And what kind of storytelling would you want to see? And who who would you want to see featured? Right. So I always follow that instinct, and um, that's kind of led me down the path that I've been on, and it's been awesome. So. Yeah, I mean, there's a. Uh, it's just from that standpoint. So um, I guess to answer your question, it's it's not always the easiest thing to do because you always want to engage and, and cheer and, and be enthusiastic about their uh, efforts. But yeah, you just kind of try to be fly on the wall and silently tell their story as it plays out. Yeah, well, I can definitely tell you that although you're silent in terms of we necessarily don't always hear your voice, it's mm -hmm. definitely felt. And so one of the questions that, that I have for you that, that's, that's actually been burning me up a lot here lately is I'm now starting to make 
more content, mm -hmm. is this issue of like balance between like your own passion projects mm -hmm. and then those that are going to be more client facing. So like the ones that are going to like pay you money. Mm -hmm. and so what are some of the things that you use as like levers for when maybe you have an active passion project, mm -hmm. um, something, and then you've got like, like for example, uh, the window seat yeah. versus that of you got to get Zach uh, finished yeah, yeah. out. Yeah, no, I, that's, that's a good question. And I'm going to be honest with you, Jordan, I haven't completely figured out that, that the right alchemy between, <laughs> you know, paid work and my own personal brand work, I guess, or, you know, my brand being Billy Yang Films. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, there's, there's so many things I want to share and express and tell out there, but there's only so much bandwidth. And that's something that I probably will have to work on um, as, as this thing grows is how to delegate, how to work with other people, how to collaborate. Yeah. Um, but right now it's, um, it's not something I've perfected. I'm actually far from it. And I feel, I feel pressure from both sides because mm -hmm. there is, okay. you know, I do have, I do have some support from my audience, um, in terms of my personal project. And that is all inclusive from podcast to my personal, uh, content that I film brand work for sure. Um, pays pays the bills. If you want to go back even further, there was a point where I made a conscious effort to eliminate. I was actually doing pretty well doing non endemic work, working with a brand outside of the running space. Okay. And it paid the bills, but at at some point, it started to feel a little soulless. Even though I was making a nice living, doing like luxury real estate or working with brands that like I don't know, coffee brands and. Uh, this and that and it just started to feel like work and at, Got it. At, at, at one point I, this is not that long ago it was probably like three or four years ago I decided to make a leap and said if I'm gonna work with brands I only wanted to be in the outdoor running adventure space and it got scary for a while because for the next year or so work dried up and I had to hustle and and really work to find that that niche, you know, to like whittle it down even further to just these specific type of brands. Got it. Okay. Um, so right now I feel like I found the right balance, although, you know, obviously this past year work basically dried up and you know, it's been tough because of the pandemic because a lot of my work is tied to events, live events, in-person events. Yeah. But, um, let's talk, let's talk more about that. So yeah. like, because so much of your work is tied to like live events, like, mm -hmm. That seems like the natural challenge, but I, I would imagine also there has to be some challenges associated with just like creativity, being able to, to be around folks. Like, so, so could we spend some time talking about just some of the challenges that you faced as a as a filmmaker during this time? Yeah, uh, it's been probably the biggest challenge of my, um, I guess, if you want to say, professional career. But it also there were a lot of good things that come of it. Okay. Um, a lot of things that I didn't foresee. I had all this travel and jobs and uh, lined up for 2020. And when it started to, all right, we, we got to shut down for a week. We got to shut down for a month. It's like, all right, all right, you know, we'll kick that can down the road. And then, it, you know, one month became six months, six months became a year. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and in terms of work, it just wasn't happening because brands weren't sure uh, if they're going to uh, have the money, how business was going to play out, so on and so forth. So it was it was definitely challenging, um, but I live lean and yeah, I had all this travel lined up. I was going to go to Iceland, I was going to go to Italy, I was going to go to Seattle, and when that slowed down and when that um, was canceled, I just realized that how much how much I was burning the candle at both ends. You can really burn yourself out in this game. Uh, I don't know how connected you are to uh, other YouTube creators or if you've had this conversation, but you can burn yourself out in this in this uh, game or in this profession because it is so, you feel this pressure and this pull to constantly create for sake of either relevancy or, or you know, just upkeep. So yeah, yeah it, was, uh, it was welcomed in that regard. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I think there was a, there was something that in me that that needed it, and I think uh, you know when you zoom out on the macro, I think we, it also helped us realize like what really was important in life and what wasn't. And um, you know, 
I'm glad things are starting to happen again and and I'm already you know dealing with and having more meetings with brands now and the work okay. is starting to come back in but yeah for this past year it was it was challenging for sure but that pause was also I guess welcomed or needed super relevant points one of the things that I did um, in terms of being able to like, I guess get ahead of any sort of like burnout I mm -hmm. mean because I work full time and I and I do this, so it's it's be very yeah. I don't easy. know how you do it. It'd be very easy for me to burn out. But what I did was once because uh, I've been working from home since March, so like a week before. Matter of fact, the the, the day after the NBA shut down, mm -hmm. my company as well and in my wife's uh, company, even weeks before, had, had been working from home. Um, so I tried to maintain somewhat of my usual schedule for like two weeks. And once I realized like, oh, this isn't going to be two weeks, it's going to be multiple months. Mm -hmm. I took a step back. And so I stopped making videos mm -hmm. uh, for a period of time. And even I allowed myself to maybe not even be as sharp at work, just recognizing like none of us have lived through this yet. Yeah. So I don't even know how this is going to go. And then slowly but surely, I, I started to kind of like regain uh, any sort of like cadence. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's certainly been challenging and just trying to figure out like what to do or how to utilize the time, um, particularly as I was starting to get now more involved with like filming other people. Um, but I use the time to get a little bit better at, um, at product, product reviews. Um, and then do you have a schedule in terms of like when you, like are you on a weekly schedule or are you on a bi-weekly schedule? I'm generally on a weekly schedule, okay. um, but, at, but my own like internal like you might not notice it but every 10 days my goal is to get out of is to get out of video mm. um, and then up until the pandemic my goal most months was just two videos a month um, which allowed me enough time to grow stay relevant and, and, and in the running space I don't feel as much pressure to put out a video every week mainly because the content I make is supplemental to the time that I spend with runners in real life so yeah. a lot of times when it comes to the ideas and the things that I make I'm less concerned about view count or even subscriber count in those situations as much as did I make something to be a resource mm. to somebody who I saw earlier the week before, somebody that messaged me and like, yeah. hey, did you make a video about that? Um, so that was, that was kind of like my mindset as far as that. So while we're talking about just like subscription, view count, things like that, yeah. you hit 100K, man, that, that, that's, yeah. that's a big deal. <laughs> I guess so, apparently. Uh, and, 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 and you did it the, I guess you did it in a non-traditional way in yeah. that I never feel in watching any of your stuff that you are putting forward your subscriber milestones is the is the reason to watch no. what it is that you do. So it happened a lot more naturally. Yeah. And I think the other interesting thing is, is that for a um, channel that does not have as many subscribers, mm -hmm. you do have like avid fans. Like your comment section is always popping <laughs> <laughs> and the viewership is like out of this world and so yeah. like it's, it's dedicated for, so, so so tell me a little bit i guess what goes through your mind as as a person just like reading comments and you're and seeing yeah fandom but but it, it's it's better than fandom uh to me and and, and reading it. It, it seems very genuine yeah the it's funny the ultra running space is is very very dedicated very passionate the amount of uh, content will never match the demand. People love watching content, ultra running content um, in particular. And I don't know why that is. I think it's, it's funny, like something that we purportedly love, I can't tell you how many comments I get where people are like, oh, I can't tell you how motivated I am after watching this to get out the door or to run a race. And you know, you don't really need that motivation to eat up pizza or to take a nap or something right but right. In, in running it's like this this duality of like once we get out the door we love it right more times than not yeah. anyway but just to get out that door people need a little push and need a, a little motivation so um you know i i've gotten a lot of uh just really positive connection and you know i, I do want it to be a two-way street too um, at the, and more like 99.8 percent of the people leave positive comments. You know, every now and again you'll get the the naysayers or the shit talkers or whatnot. But um, yeah, it's just a really good welcoming group of people. And yeah, my instinct has never been to be a traditional YouTuber. You know, okay. Hit subscribe and smash the like button at the end. <laughs> um, I just want to make content that organically reaches and 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 brings on followers 
Yeah. And if they don't want to follow, like that's totally fine. So I probably could have hit that milestone uh, much earlier. Yeah. But for me, it was never about that. I, and it's not even really about the view count either. It's about the engagement. It's about the comments. And that is when I know that it resonated with people and it gained traction. And of course I get like the occasional private messages, the emails, and that, that means a lot to me too. So it's, uh, it's really a two way street. I want it to be um, just a resource for motivation, a resource for inspiration. And the best comments to me are, hey, I was never a runner, but seeing you run 100 miles, I was motivated to sign up for my first 5K or 10K or yeah. first marathon. And to actually create future runners, that's just priceless. What is it that you want a person who stumbles into your content or intentionally uh, goes into a, a, piece of, uh, a piece of film, frankly, and that you're making? What do you want the viewer to take away? Uh, I don't know. I guess people kind of extrapolate and take away their own thing. Sometimes things that I hadn't imagined or foreseen. I'm honestly just somebody who this thing never came naturally to me. I'm not an endurance athlete. I'm a very middle of the pack, you know, 323 marathoner, yeah. 132 half marathoner. Like I'm not, I'm not anything exceptional. I may be front of the mid pack if anything, <laughs> yeah. but uh, but that be it. So I guess. And there was a there was a time in my past like I, I smoked for twelve years you know I was the furthest thing from an endurance athlete that you could possibly be, but I guess if there's anything I can show is that it's okay if you're trying to wedge this square peg into a round hole, as long as you keep putting in the work as as long as you just uh i guess try to be the best version of yourself as as cheesy as that may sound um that these things are attainable these things are possible if i could do it anybody can do it and um that's just basically what i want to express i guess if anything or have people take away is that um i'm very candid about my struggles um whether it's running 100 miles whether it's hiking 200 plus miles on the john muir trail it's not easy i had I experienced issues like anybody else and you know this whole social media glossed up lifestyle of of either fan life or hiking and everything is just is just highlighting the best moments of it I want to show the realness I want to show the ups and downs uh, the emotional swings because that's what it takes it's not easy but there's value in doing things that aren't easy you know I was thinking because I've known that I was going to interview you now for, for, for a few weeks, but I'd, all, I'd always been thinking, like, when I watch one of your films, like, what is it? And, and as I started making things, I was like, what is it that I take away specifically, like, from things that you make? Mm -hmm. And what I recognized is, even as, even as a runner, what I recognize that resonates with me is you show the resistance that a person is trying, that has to pass through in order mm -hmm. to get to something that they want. Right. Whether it's you filming yourself or the various runners that you've uh, interacted with, because yeah. I couldn't figure out specifically like like when I watch like the why, mm -hmm. for example, right? I come at running from a former track guy, someone that's embraced now like road running, mm -hmm. but like I watched it and was just like in awe of it. Still didn't want to become an ultra <laughs> ultra runner. <laughs> that's fine. But I was like, what is it? Like I mean, like yes, it's beautiful to watch, and yes, the the, the, the music, the the score there is, is 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 outstanding. But I was like, what is it about like these stories? And I was like that, and it clicked while I was watching, mm -hmm. um, again, the, uh, the your John uh, Mirror Trail thing. It was like you show like what a person is going through like as they're going through it now some of that you get a benefit from as a as someone that's like documenting what's going on mm -hmm. but when i look at like what's different with your window seat or whatever like that's that's the thing that like i believe separates you and it's i don't feel like you do it in like a in a way of like i'm, I'm a glutton for punishment and here i hear all these things that i'm doing like I want to talk a little bit about like the John Murray Trail because it started off and just kind of like a oh I'm gonna do this thing that's 200 plus miles, yeah, 340k. That in and of itself is already a feat, but the amount of things that like went wrong like, oh during that situation, yeah, 
I, I have so many. So, so, so let's start with first and foremost, like what made this the right time for you to even uh, even, even attempt uh, going through the John Merrill Trail? From from a timing aspect of it, it was never a better time to embark on something like this or to tackle something like this. It was um, we're going through a period of social unrest. We're going through the pandemic and and something about the very simple notion of getting the miles, achieving the miles to get from point A to B, to be in this beautiful part of God's green earth. And it was beautiful. And it was beautiful. Or is beautiful rather. <laughs> yeah. And just, yeah, just to disconnect and be with friends. And, and uh, it was all very appealing to me. Now, granted, this is, even as an ultra runner, as a mountain runner, this was like a whole different ball of wax. I had no idea uh, what kind of gear to get, and there was a lot of gear too that I had to accumulate in a short period of time. I saw the, I saw the, the gear video yeah. that you did and talked about how you used YouTube Dude. <laughs> as, as a place to like find things. And I couldn't go into something as simple as going into an REI. I didn't have that option because REIs were closed. Yeah. So I couldn't fit the pack properly. So I I had all kinds of problems with the pack, and you saw the buckle break, um, and then something with my feet. I didn't anticipate because I just never did anything for that long a period of time. I've done 100 miles yeah. and you have feet problems, you just kind of grit through it and you're done in 20 plus hours. But I, what happens when your feet get incrementally worse as each day wears on, but you have no choice but to to move, to get from you know to the next stop point. So it was all very new to me and um, there was, uh, there was a lot of growth, personal growth that had to happen, but I think there's just so much value in doing things and stepping outside your comfort zone. That I think that is the inherent appeal. And I explained this, I, I try to tackle this in the why too about running 100 miles. It's like, what is it about these athletic endeavors that draw us in when we have all the comforts of the world? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, why would we intentionally sleep on the ground in cold temperatures eating you know like re like dehydrated food and um and or just go up and down mountain passes for days on end like why do we why do we seek this why do we find value in this and i think inherently it is the growth potential it is to to better yourself in some <clears throat> In some way, through a uh, through a physical feat, but also I think mentally, we've we've gotten a little soft, and we've gotten to a point where, like I think, we are our best selves and our mo more natural self when we have these daily challenges. Yeah. I would say what's interesting, though, even in that, so I, so I agree with that in, in a lot of ways, particularly just the desire to see like what is the best version of me if I were to take away something else or if I were to pursue something that definitely would like unlock something like some mm -hmm. hidden potential yeah. or something like that. And your circumstance <clears throat> though, that growth played out on camera, mm -hmm. which I think for some people might feel not only unnatural, but like because I am telling you how I feel, maybe I feel the need to put on a performance as to how I feel. Yeah. What made this very unique is we could see your feet were becoming shredded. Yeah. It, like there, there, there was there like, and, and you talked about what was going on there. So my, my question there is that you got the dual challenge now, still trying to get through what, yeah. what, what, is, what is taking taking place, but you're filming as well. Did you have any moments where you where you were thinking like, oh, like maybe I should stop filming this. And I just just focus on getting through this and then, you know, come back and then talk to us about like, here's what happened. Here's, here's, <laughs> here's, here's the thing I, I realized in, in doing this for however many years I've been doing it. The real, the money, the value, the, the best parts are when you don't want to turn the camera on. You know what I mean? When you're struggling, okay. when you're in the pain cave and the last thing you want to do is turn the camera on yourself and talking about how much this sucks. That is the last, that's a, usually the furthest instinct I have at that point. But you have to put the filmmaker hat on <laughs> and you have to know this is where, this is where that, that pivotal, the, the crux of the journey is. And to be able to shed the ego 
and point the camera at yourself and talk in a very real way about what's going on in a raw, unfiltered way. I think that is, that's the meat of it. That's where the value is to people where, oh, he over, they saw it play out on camera and he overcame that. I can overcome this. And it's sure you get your fair share of, I've had, I've had a couple of internet trolls who are like, dude, you whine too much or you do this too much. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm sorry this wasn't for you, but I don't want to present this glossed over way of like, oh, next thing you know, we're at the finish line, everyone's happy and friends are getting engaged, blah, blah, blah. No, nah, man, it's, it's showing that struggle. Yeah. It's showing the, the difficulty that makes the end so much more valuable. Yeah. Because you overcame those odds. One hundred percent. And I think the other nice thing that happened. I don't know if you like. I, I don't know if you read every single one of your comments, but I know like one of the, the funniest comments to me was like, "This could have been called like like food and feet or something <laughs> like that." Because like there was like in the middle of all the pain and things like that you were experiencing, you all would like, interchange these like couple of seconds long food reviews of the yeah. different like dehydrated foods that you had. And so it, it it was it was fun. I think you actually should turn that into like its own like little piece of mini content and yeah. just like just roll that out because when I started Googling like just um, like hiking food or like travel, I'm not seeing anything that was as entertaining as that. So, yeah. so that might be a thing that you might want to do. <laughs> um, so it's like you go through the struggle, you go through the struggle, your feet are getting shredded, but here's this food <clears> review and you know what, we're going to jump in this lake. <clears> and so and so, it's, it, it, so it shows a more um, rounded yeah. uh, a version of what it is to be human in this moment so yeah. it's not that you're any one of those things all by themselves they're all there and i think that's what made it a very like satisfying yeah uh, watch for me so, yeah I, I i mean i love food i am uh part of one of the reasons i love living in southern california other than the weather and the topography and the access to beaches and mountains is um man the food here is incredible but you glossed over those other three or four things like those aren't all really dope too yeah, yeah no no I, i'm totally totally i mean it's just jumping into alpine lakes and yeah. doing all that stuff is rad but there was a reason why <laughs> kyle uh gave me the trail name of bourdain you know anthony bourdain who's one of my heroes who who melts travel, storytelling, and food all into this incredible package. And, yeah. you know, RIP to the legend, but man, that's what it's all about. That's life in, a, in like, distilled into, into a, a figure or a person and uh, ethos. It's just like, I love, for me, that's what living is. That's what life is. To be present, to not just hurry up and eat food as, as fuel, but to to be present, to savor each moment, to eat, savor each bite. I mean, that is, is a, kind of in a nutshell what what life is. And um, yeah, it, it just, something about that journey just encompass all these little things about about my, my personality and you know, the things that I'm interested in is also to, at the same time, the, when the last thing you wanna do is add 10, 15, 30 minutes to your trip, by taking off your pack, shedding your clothes, and jumping into an ice cold lake, like, but it's also because that is when you feel the most alive. Mm -hmm. You know, that is something that you will, whether it's documented or not, you will remember that moment, and you will remember what it's like to be human because you're feeling everything from head to toe. Now, now one of the other things that stood out to me in terms of this overall adventure or journey, like I said, you do more of like the ultra running, trail running thing. Mm -hmm. Through hiking, it was still a bit of a newer feat to you. And certainly as like a viewer, it was new to me to see as like a thing. And so you touched on the aspect, like in the, in the uh, film, about like the community aspect of things. And so mm -hmm. something that I, I could use your help in understanding, mm -hmm. at the midway point, you got you all um, went to like a restock area and you had like these bins or buckets show up. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 all, all I knew was there was excitement about what was in the bucket. Like, yeah. I, is it a surprise? Do you have to mail it in ahead of time? Bro, like, how, how, does, like, how does it even work? You have to, you <laughs> basically, what I did was I went to a Home Depot. There's a, there's a limitation on the size and, and, and what you can send and you're, you're exactly right. You mail it in ahead of time, and if you catch it in the video, it j mine just got there a day before. Right. Yeah. So, I I mean I cut it close, <laughs> and if I don't have that, I can't continue. It's just everything you need to continue the through hike is in your pack. I just think about how crazy that is. Like 
from shelter, food, uh, warmth, everything is in that pack. And there's something both beautiful and, and uh, kind of like harrowing to have everything. If you don't have it in that moment, you're effed. You know, like, yeah. uh, like there was a point where I ran out of ibuprofen or it wasn't me, it was uh, my friends who supplied the ibuprofen. I had, I couldn't foresee how much I would rely on that. Right. You know, yeah. so it, that's when the community com came in because there's this amazing community of through hikers too, where you kind of use food and whatnot as currency. So one yeah. thing I didn't document was there was, or I, I talked about it. I think during the video was, um, you know, I needed ibuprofen to just to hide into all the pain of my feet because they were they got swollen, they got they were throbbing, and just the constant uh, friction of the raw areas was massively painful. Yeah. Are you healed up now? I think I'm good now. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, at, at some point, my friends, we encountered people going the other way, and they were able to. Uh, secure some more ibuprofen with exchanging. I think it was like fruit roll-ups or something. Yeah. You know, like That's such a cool exchange, though. The, the, the barter system. Yeah, <laughs> the simple, the simplest pleasures. And it wasn't that you know, it wasn't necessary by any means. But at that point, you have all kinds of food cravings, or you have all kinds of like it was a luxury item. So yeah. it was, it was cool that um, we were, and they were super nice. And I, there was another couple that we ran into that when we, just before the resupply point, we were basically out of food and they were kind enough to give us their, um, you know, their extras. So just also, especially during that time, reaffirmed how great humanity can be. Yeah, certainly. So yeah. I would encourage you, if you're not watching that, definitely do it. I'll put a link into the description. Like it was, it's awesome watching. Is that any, is that anything I could rope you into trying? Even like an overnight thing? And overnight thing, I think you probably could. Yeah. Yeah, because I, mean, I, 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 I told you before, I, I've not been uh, camping before. It's insane. <laughs> it's <laughs> insane. How can, okay, yeah. We'll talk about it's, offline. It, it, it's never been something that, one, was uh, presented to me. Mm -hmm. I'll say it's like saying like someone who had knowledge and said, let's go do it. Or um, whoever I was around didn't, to me, put together like a good enough argument. And, yeah. and not that it needs to be the argument, but, but not a good enough reason like we got to go do this. So did watching that make you want to do it more or less or did you stay, did your position kind of stay? I think I would be inclined <clears throat> to at least try the local mountain that you mm -hmm. did, like like when you tried out your, try to go. Mount Baldy? I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I wouldn't mind doing like an overnight to like get a sense and, yeah. and then I'll I kind of... I can live with the living out of a pack uh, mm -hmm. for a period of time. I don't know how much time I would just want to. Like, I think my longest trip anywhere on a plane or anything mm -hmm. is maybe in like eight days. Yeah. And so at some point, I'm going to want just like access to my world. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. two weeks might be a bit much. I, I think I'd be willing to try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At, at, least, at least an overnight. Sorry, I interrupted uh, whatever you were about to say, your next question. And this is definitely like just like a filmmaker type question. Mm -hmm. Did you end up walking? quite a bit more mileage for the sake of having like set the camera oh, yeah. up, you know, walk by. Oh, for do sure. It, do, do, do it again. I wouldn't say, <laughs> I wouldn't say significantly, but it's a necessary evil, right? Yeah. Like, think about how in the moment you feel stupid. And I, I still, <laughs> I still struggle with this sometimes is when you're, especially when you're out running by yourself, just setting a camera and then doing the, doing the run by, <laughs> yeah. you know? And I'm not even talking about the social media for the, for the no. gram t type of thing, yeah, but no, as a filmmaker, like, it's... Yeah. You need, you need yeah. those moments where you're like disconnected, like, yeah. like somebody's watching you. And I actually think <laughs> there were a couple of comments that people were like, oh, wait a minute, so you just set the camera down and walk by it? Like, <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? It's necessary. Like, it, how do you think this gets done? Um, <laughs> You probably don't know about Survivor Man. It's a reality show, but there is a guy who will. It's not like Bear Grylls because Bear Grylls will bring a camera crew with him. But there's a guy called this guy Les Stroud. Um, was would be placed by himself in an area that he had to kind of like navigate and survive through, and it's just him. So yeah, there's plenty of times. I mean, the the only way he can do it is just to put the tripod down and show him either walking by or, and it's just. Look, you, you have to, there's a duality between you, the, uh, the athlete or the active participant in whatever you may be doing, and then the filmmaker. And you have to have those things live together. You got to do the dumb things that you feel silly about in the moment. Right. But yeah.
Yeah, because because some because some of the um, just the, the cinematography is, is is always well. Yeah. Um, but I was also thinking to myself like, damn, like this is two hundred plus miles of movement. It's not like a quick a, a quick walk by like. Every, it's every, it's every, literally hang on guys. Yeah yeah. So, so so each time you're doing this like you're adding and it yeah framing it. Yeah, and then, yeah. Okay okay guys, let's just walk by the camera. And you're involving other people too. Exactly. So yeah. that's something like so his feet are shredded. Mm -hmm. Everything else is going on. He's in pain. And and but you but, but you you remain you, you, you remain you, locked in. Yeah. You gotta like, you gotta <laughs> see the value in and and kind of project ahead of time. And again. Especially in those moments where it's the last thing you want to do, you got to do it. it. It came out so well. Yeah. So, so looking back at it, like, do you ever really spend much? So, I mean, obviously, in the editing process, you're watching it. Mm -hmm. Do you go back and watch like your? your yeah, I, this is, this may sound uh, this may sound kind of vain or narcissistic, but there are certain projects that I can go back and look at because um uh, you know several months or a couple of years removed from it and yeah. watch it almost as as a uh, a viewer and go oh man like that was good or or cringe and oh you know but yeah i've i've done that and i don't know why um every now and again you're like oh yeah i did that and then you watch it for a couple of minutes or you intend to watch it for a couple of minutes and then you go down the wormhole um I just did that recently, recently with a project I did uh, with Strava. This was a, a one of the branded work, but um, we found three first time, like non or three, I guess, new runners who were going to run their first marathon in New York City. Right. Okay. I mean, we talked about yeah. that before you went and did it, and then a little bit. After. Which was, I mean, it, I I found myself watching it because I'm I'm engaged with Strava for a, another project, but I ended up watching it going. Oh, I mean, on one hand, yeah, just like their stories are incredible. On the other hand, millions upon millions of people were piled into New York City or lining the, the five or six boroughs or whatever it is. Sorry, I forget. Yeah. And it just seems so impossibly far away from where we are now because how's that going to happen again <laughs> anytime in the near future? Um, but so, yeah, in those two respect, I, I found myself watching it. It was it was an awesome experience. Yeah, I think I think that one of the one of the cool aspects of making things is that over a period of time you do build up a bit of like a library. Mm -hmm. um, do you ever watch it like on like a larger television, or are you are you particularly just? Uh, yeah, I'm. I don't know. I'm. I don't really. So one of the things about me is like I don't really watch other running content that much. Okay. And it's not. I. It's not for like lack of quality I mean there's a ton of quality content out there yourself included I appreciate but that. usually just I have so many other interests I like to think I have so many other interests and that's usually you don't really want to wear out the thing that you're you are passionate about from yeah. a professional and personal standpoint but I have so many other interests that I usually find myself watching like you know food videos or or something of the like and uh, what, 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 so what so when it comes to like your food things, and I, and I gave you the title of food critic earlier on, mm -hmm. only because when you and I have met up, like you have a very strong opinion about where we should meet up at, yeah. and, and, and where, where we should and eat. And where we should eat after. Where, 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 where we should eat mm -hmm. afterward. So like, let's talk, let, let's, let's round off a couple of foods. So like best donuts in LA? Uh, best donut in LA by far, oh well, not by far, but it's, uh, it's up there is, um, you know it, right? Yes. Oh, I just want you to say it. <laughs> help, help a brother out, man. Sidecar, man. Sidecar, thank you. <laughs> oh, man. It's the old brain. It's not working like it used to. Yeah, sidecar is is up there. And the... Are you a cake donut guy or a yeast donut guy? I could do both, but the, the uh, butter and salt is my all-time favorite. Yeah, people, that, like, people, people go nuts over it. Warmed up. I always warm it up. So I can buy about like half a dozen and stick it in the freezer and I will warm it up in the oven. And I've never bought any donuts and put them in the freezer before. Oh yeah. That's no, it, 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 it holds up okay. It holds okay. up okay as long as you warm it up properly in yeah. the oven. But the butter and salt in particular is the perfect intersection of savory and sweet. And after a long run or, or just any time, let's be <laughs> frank, yeah. is... Damn your perfection. Best pizza in LA. 
Now, I, I, I'll tell you, as a person that's coming from living on the East Coast, mm-hmm. like I'm very like New York City biased yeah. in terms of just style. Of I am business. too. I am too. But I recently became a, um, <clears throat> I recently became a Chicago deep dish convert. Okay. Because it was actually funny during the pandemic, I saw a, another food review review uh, Lou Malnati's deep dish Chicago pizza, and they started shipping it. Oh, frozen, I like in, pretty good. Yeah. yeah, in dry ice. Yeah. So I ordered it, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Like Chicago, you're getting some love from me. But yeah, I mean, in general, I prefer New York style. Um, still haven't found the best place in LA yet. There's Joe's Pizza in Santa Monica, which is good. There's, um, I think, Prince Street Pizza uh, just opened up on Sunset in LA. I want to try it. I haven't quite gotten around to it, but yeah. Um, there are a couple other spots that's not coming to mind right now, but New York, New York style is uh, is definitely my preference too. Surprisingly enough, I think Long Beach may have one of the better New York style pizza spots. It's a spot that my wife and I stumbled upon. It's called Milana's. All right. Um, I, we, we we tend to just buy a, buy a large pie, but they do serve pizza by the slice as well, which to me is is a big indicator of yeah the thing. So. Um, Depending on how you're on time, we might, might, might take a trip. No, no, I'm, after this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, after yeah. this, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool, man. So, anything that we didn't touch on that you feel like you just got to say on camera, put, put it on wax? Uh, you know, I, I don't know, man. I think, I think there's so much about this past year that I'm just fascinated by. Um, you know, I think opportunity is kind of disguised as, as restrictions if that makes sense. Like, I think there's so much I learned about, about this past year and what's important, what's not. And it did kind of sharpen the focus on, on things we take for granted, things that we neglect that we previously, yeah, that we just previously took for granted. Um, it can be as simple as health. It can be as simple as people, community. I miss it. I miss the shit out of people and gathering community. And I will never, ever take that for granted. And I think that's one of the more important things about certainly the ultra running community, but the running community as a whole is how much we feed off each other, how much we rely on that energy, how much, how important these events are, not just for personal egoic accomplishments of running a PR or personal best, but it's really in the sharing a beer after or sharing a donut after, you know, it's just like that, yeah. that human engagement through our shared love, whether you're, you're fat, you're skinny, you're black, white, people come together under this one giant umbrella, which is endurance sports and running. And then there's all these interesting characters within it that I, I just feed off of and I love. So, um, yeah, I guess that would be the final thing I would say about, uh, about, just like this past year and how how important it was that we go through this. I, again, it was just like it, the struggles, the discomfort of a through hike, the discomfort of running 100 miles. We have to embrace that and because there are opportunities within that and in, in, in terms of like reframing your perspective or, or extracting certain lessons that would not have otherwise come. All right, so my question that I ask all my guests is, so if you had an opportunity to put a billboard anywhere in the world, mm-hmm. what would it be? What would it say? I don't watch a lot of television, but there was a show called Ted Lasso. Have you seen or watched it? I've heard it's an Apple TV show. Apple TV. Okay, yeah. Yeah. It was, it sounds, you know, you might laugh at me, but it was borderline life-changing. Okay. Uh, for a variety of reasons. All the characters were super lovable. Um, but it was really what I what I extracted from it was. Man, I really hope you watch it because it's super digestible. I'm, I'm, There's I'm, only one season, I'm and gonna go, I'm gonna go watch it. And each episode is about thirty or forty minutes. I eat content is a is a factor of my job. Yeah, so. but bro, it's like, it again. It might sound cheesy, but it just reminded me how important it is to be kind and to be nice and especially in, in these times where everyone's just like up against one another, whether it's for political reasons or tied to the pandemic, what have you. And there's this one scene where he is uh, kind of engaging in this dart game against this uh, adversary, this, you know, without 
getting too in the weeds about it. And he quotes a he quotes something from Walt Whitman to remain curious and not judgmental. And what I extracted from that is I think the good people in the world, the 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 more interesting people, the doers, the uh, the accomplishers, like the one of the traits that is common amongst them is that they're curious. They're curious how things work. They're curious about um, you know what their fellow human is thinking, like really thinking, and without casting judgment on it, without having this knee jerk. Well, you know, like we saw it. We saw it more. We probably saw it at its height this past year, yeah. where people were judging one another. And without really trying to like think about or or conversate around like where they're coming from, what their viewpoint is, what their perspective is, and I think by and large, I think everyone like a good majority of everyone are are good and decent people, and I would never assume the worst thing about somebody just because of one opinion, um, and you know it's just like a reminder, a simple quote about be curious, not judgmental. And I think that that just encapsulates so many things within it. And I think first and foremost, just you know, be a good human, be a curious person, be a, a curious individual, and just engage and and engage in conversation with your fellow human being a lot more than instead of this reactive thing of you know this black and white world that we're living in right now. That is an awesome quote. I appreciate the addition of perspective. I will check out uh, Tay Lasso. Thank you so much awesome, for, for agreeing to come out here to Long Beach and, and yeah, do man. this uh, interview. Thanks for having me, man. It I'd love a... to uh, reward you with some pizza. So. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so I'll see everyone next time. Thanks so much to Billy Yang for coming through. And I'll see you next time. Jordan Thomas. Peace.